Back in August, Father Gary Daly, director of the Newman Catholic Center at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst, led a 10-day Catholic communication-sponsored pilgrimage to Belgium and Germany. In our final segment today, the pilgrims leave the beautiful Oberammergau, where they had just witnessed the monumental performance of Jesus' Passion and prepare for their trip back to the States. It's hardly a wrap, however, as their journey still has a few surprises in store. Join us now as we encounter some beautiful rural scenes, a fairy tale castle, and a visit to the famous Glockenspiel in the historic city of Munich. Is that a cross at the very peak there shining? Yes, it, it is. We leave our beautiful Bavarian hotel and the village of Oberammergau and make our way for Holy Mass at a pilgrimage church called Weisskirk. This church was built in the 18th century, and it all started when a statue of the scourged Savior, which was used for Good Friday procession in the locality, fell into disrepair and was taken by a local woman named Maria Lori and placed in her farmhouse. On June 14, 1738, she and her husband saw tears in the eyes of the statue. Pilgrimages to this site began and the church was constructed and now over one million pilgrims visit this church each year. We make another stop to tour one of the most picturesque castles in Germany, the Neuschweinstein Castle. It was constructed by order of its monarch, King Louis II. Construction began in 1868 and was never completed. Louis II lived there off and on for only six months. He died in 1886 and weeks after his passing, it was open to the public as a museum. The beautiful vistas and the panoramic views from the castle are breathtaking. This picturesque, romantic, and fairy tale castle receives 1.3 million visitors a year, and it served as the inspiration for Walt Disney's Sleeping Beauty Castle. Our final full day on pilgrimage takes us on a walking tour in the city of Munich. The towers of the Cathedral of Our Dear Lady shapes Munich's skyline more than any other building in the city. The cathedral was erected in the 15th century and took 20 years to construct. After suffering heavy damage during the Second World War, the cathedral was reconstructed between 1948 and 1955 with a planar design. Today, the cathedral is the seat of the Archbishop of Munich. This was the cathedral seat of Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger from 1977 to 1981, before he was called to service in Rome and then eventually became Pope Benedict XVI. There's an interesting legend in this church. The story goes that as a building work on the cathedral came to an end, that the devil himself crept around the church and was annoyed to find that yet another building had been erected in God's name. In the vestibule, he noticed that the church did not contain a single window and began laughing out loud at the builder's stupidity. He leapt up in joy, and when he landed back down on the ground, left behind his footprint. However, when he took another step forward, he noticed that the church did indeed have windows. They had just been covered by massive pillars and the former Gothic high altar. In anger, he is said to have transformed himself into a powerful storm in an attempt to tear down the church, at which he failed. Even today, it is said that you are able to feel his wind in the streets around the cathedral. We had the opportunity to celebrate Mass at the Assam Church of St. John Nepomuk, a beautiful example of Baroque architecture. Baroque churches are supposed to um, bring us into the heavenly realm, and that's why from the ceiling to the floor we have angels surrounding us, and that's what the Baroque style is supposed to bring us. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. I'm standing here in the Marienplatz, which is the city square. And behind me is City Hall in the famous Glockenspiel, which has been enchanting visitors for over 100 years and recounts a royal wedding, jousting tournament, and ritualistic dance. The show lasts about 15 minutes and concludes with the golden bird up the top emerging and chirping three times. Different tunes are played on the clock's 43 bells. 
During our 10-day pilgrimage, we had an opportunity to speak with many of our pilgrims about what made this journey special for them. I believe my husband and I deepened our faith in very individual ways. We learned to take the time to go a little bit deeper. We never give ourselves permission to do that in a busy life. And this pilgrimage made us stop, reflect, and, and really look at what's most important in life. I know we hear of Lourdes and we hear of Fatima, but I had never heard of Bono. So it was just very nice to be able to learn something new about Our Lady and where she appeared and to learn about the little girl that she appeared to. And the setting was just very beautiful. Our dad was Deacon Bill Mosley, and he served over in Germany during World War II. And he had had the opportunity to write a memoir of his time over here and mention the fact that he was in Aachen. So the fact that we were able to come here was very meaningful for us. I think that the, the architecture, the beauty of the, the downtowns, the squares, uh, the beautiful churches, the cathedrals we visited were, uh, were certainly all highlights. I wanted especially to see uh, the, the, the Passion Play at Old Bar Amagal since it's only held every 10 years. And I'm glad we did it towards the end of our trip because it was really the highlight for me so far. My husband and I were here back in 1980 and we vowed that we would come back again. My husband has since passed and I feel I had to be here and he is with me. It is meeting other people who also want to increase their spirituality and you really care for each other. Even if you might never meet them again in this life on this earth, but you know you will always remember them. And Father Gary tells us that an itinerary is currently in the works for this coming summer of 2023. If you've traveled with us before, or if these video segments have inspired you to explore your faith a little deeper, you'll want to stay tuned for all of the upcoming details. Thanks again, Father Gary and videographer-editor Bill Pakosha for producing these segments.